20 minute game. What in the world we finally got there? What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. It is technically Monday as I'm recording this uh, and so it's the start of the week. But for you guys, it's probably Tuesday. I hope you guys have had a fantastic start to your week uh, and I want to make sure if you guys are not already, please make sure you subscribe. It really does mean a lot to us. We not only uh, really appreciate, of course, anybody uh, who is willing to, you know, jump in, subscribe, support us that way. But on top of that, uh, if anybody uh, subscribes right now, you're actually entered to win a free Kamigawa uh, Neon Dynasty draft booster box. Uh, now the winner of that giveaway will be announced on February 23rd and there are other ways to enter so I want to encourage you guys to check out our website at resolvesmtg.com. Please also check out the video here on YouTube for more details uh, and how you can get maximum entries and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about today's deck. Uh, this deck is actually brought to us by uh, someone who until recently I hadn't actually known about uh, but I did watch this video and it was fantastic but it's top Deck King. Uh, Top Deck King is another fellow content creator, a little bit smaller than us, but certainly has the views uh, and some amazing decks on this channel. So please go check him out. Uh, and again, thank you very much, uh, Top Deck King, for sharing this uh, this deck over on Aetherhub. Uh, I'm really excited to try it today. So this is Simic Ramp Giants. Um, so the idea is very simply just to ramp into some big daddy stuff. We've got Cyclone Summoner, we've got Hullbreaker Horror, and of course we've got the big daddy of them all, Alron's Epiphany, uh, to get some extra turns and hopefully finish the game very, very quickly. Now to help us ramp, of course, we've got multiple things. So we do have Prosperous Innkeeper, throwing out that treasure token, hopefully gaining some life later on, but really that's kind of a minor thing in comparison to the rest of this, uh, because we're not chocked full of creatures, as you may notice. We do have Glass Pool, mimic here able to copy something as it comes down which is pretty good uh, we've got quandrix cultivator this is obviously going to bring out a land onto the battlefield so just some very quick easy ramp uh and uh not i mean it's a three four for four it's not great but it's not terrible value either so uh it actually gets around quite a lot of burn as well not all of it but quite a lot of it uh, we do have Leer, so this is going to allow us to replay things from our graveyard, uh, which is quite powerful. Uh, and then, of course, Emrith, Desert Storm, just a super, super powerful 5-mana threat. Uh, ward cost of 4 as long as it's untapped, and then, of course, that little draw ability as well. Uh, but really, we're, we're trying to ramp into these big daddy things here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we do have Field Trip. Uh, this is going to allow us to pull out some lands, hopefully ramp us a little bit as well. This does have, of course, the learn mechanics, so we're able to pull some environmental sciences. We've got teachings, containment breach, and then uh, the, uh, the mascot exhibition uh, at the very, very top end. For some card draw things like that, we do have Glimpse the Cosmos. This is a very nice little card, especially in the Giants deck, uh, because you can replay it from the graveyard for one blue, which is fantastic. Uh, now, along with that, we do have a few other things. We've got Divide by Zero, Fading Hope for some interaction. Uh, Inscription of Insight for just super flexibility uh, allows us to do a number of different things, draw some cards, create a little creature token as needed, or just return creatures to the hand, uh, which is really good. Uh, Consuming Tide, obviously added it's best in a deck like this where we are anticipating having the bigger threat uh, so the idea is to drop this down after we've already played a big threat bounce everything else back to the hand uh, and, and the opponent and, and ourselves obviously will get to keep one thing hopefully our thing is bigger and hopefully we can win the game just off of that immediately but overall I think this deck is really really sweet and again top deck king thank you so much for sharing over on aether hub I'm really excited to try this one out guys let's go ahead let's jump into the games let's see how we do hopefully we can get a couple wins i haven't tested this too much yet uh but it looks really really good so let's see what we can do all right guys here we are for game number one uh not an exceptionally exciting hand but the fading hope does give us a little bit of time we can go ahead and foretell this and then get our way to that inscription of insight so we'll give this a shot we'll see how it works i'm gonna be learning as we go through this of course uh and so this will be 
A bit of an interesting one, but I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. That's not a bad draw for us. This just gives us a little bit of that ramp that we know we're going to need. Uh, and obviously with the Alron's Epiphany in hand, we know we've got something to ramp into. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this. Looks like we're up against the snow deck uh, based on what they just threw in the graveyard. So we'll see how this goes. Perfect. So what we can actually do here is wait until they activate this uh, before we uh, go ahead and bounce that. Um, the question is, do we still want to go ahead and foretell this or do we just want to wait? I'm going to go ahead and foretell it. If we take a hit for two, it's not the end of the world for us. So I'm OK with that. Let's go ahead and uh, risk it. OK, that might even be a better option. Um, yeah. All right, so we could drop this down and pass and hope for the best. <laughs> a lot of waiting in this deck so far, but that's OK. Uh, obviously, depending on what they do here, we may just end up bouncing the Grazalax. Um, and I think that's probably just going to be the case here. Uh, let's use do we want to divide by zero? Let's let this resolve first. All right. Um, yeah, let's divide by zero here. This is going to allow us to pull a card from our sideboard, which I think is more important. Uh, let's see. What could we draw? Probably just the environmental sciences. This just guarantees us a fifth land, uh, which of course we will need. Um, and really, we've already got a guarantee here, but it just kind of makes that a little bit easier. All right. Um, let's go ahead and play this out for green just to make sure we've got kind of everything we need. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the play is just Cultivator. Uh, they're probably going to be able to ascend this, uh, but eventually we just get to Fading Hope it. So kind of okay with that. And this again is going to ramp us. So next turn, we actually just have all Ron's Epiphany if we'd like it. Oh, okay. Disdainful stroke. Sure. Fair enough. Uh, kind of got us there. That's fine. Mono blue snow. They've got this, but they also, it's kind of an interesting deck. I haven't seen this yet. Normally if I see snow, it's like a blue black version, if that makes sense. Uh, and so this is a bit of an odd one, but Hey, I mean, if it's working for him, it's working for him. So uh, would love a more permanent way to deal with certain things, but this is a giant deck. We know that that's not going to necessarily be the case. Uh, and so that's no surprise, obviously. Okay. Uh, let's see. What can we do here? Um, I mean, I think we just bounce two creatures. I think that's just the play. Uh, it's going to slow them down enough that we can kind of make it to uh, later turns here. Um, so let's bounce. Definitely you. Counter target non creature spell. Um, that could be a problem. But I think the play is actually the Ascendant Spirit just to slow them down a little bit. Uh, and we can actually just bounce that with the Fading Hope as needed. So let's hold up that Fading Hope. Uh, if they just play the this little guy again, uh, Grazalax, uh, we probably just Fading Hope it to keep them off of the card draw. If they want to counter it with the Hermit, that's fine, uh, because that really opens the door for uh, ooh, uh, for her Alron's Epiphany. The problem is we don't have a threat to go with the Epiphany, which is kind of an annoying thing. Um, uh, do we bounce? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get that off the field. This is just going to guarantee us, hopefully, that we can get the Epiphany down. It's also going to give us a uh, scry or yeah, a scry here, which is pretty relevant. I'm going to put that on the bottom. We really are looking for a threat. Uh, and this is a fairly threat light deck, so it's no surprise we don't have anything too crazy yet. But let's hope for a little bit more. I mean, we can certainly just drop this. Uh, it doesn't seem great, uh, to, to, to be honest here. Um, other options. What do we have? We can do this. Doesn't seem that great either. I guess we just epiphany. We'll get those bird tokens, which is quite nice. And then, of course, we do get something here. Um, so we can divide by zero on this at a later time, which isn't bad. Let's do this. We'll pull a green source and then we'll pull a mascot exhibition. 
Um, and then here what we can do is after they attack and this loses the ward ability, we can divide by zero onto it. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we don't just die here. I mean, we're, we're at 15. We've got a, a decent life total still. Um, but ooh, that might be a problem. I mean, we knew it was there, but um, we'll see how they do here. Also, guys, if you notice my voice is still a little bit rough, uh, I am still kind of dealing with some of the uh, I, I if you don't know, I had the flu last week uh, and I'm still kind of dealing with some of that, which is a bit annoying. It's it's not like I'm terribly sick or anything anymore. It's just that I have the residual sinus stuff, uh, which is just not fun. So we figured they would do this. That's fine. That's why we did it before we block. Um, well, I guess. No, whenever it deals damage to a player, I'm going to take the block here. I'm not particularly interested in allowing them to draw just more and more cards. That seems obviously terrible for us. Uh, so what's the play here? Um, well, first, <sighs> hmm, it's kind of a tricky one, actually, because we can just environmental sciences. We're obviously not going to mascot exhibition straight into the hermit. It just seems like a terrible idea. Um, so let's let's first environmental sciences. Let's see how this goes. We can survive one more turn. That's not a problem. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get this land here. We're kind of building up to the hall. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we just need kind of one more. Let's go ahead and drop the cultivator. <laughs> I would happily take that action. Um, I'll just get a forest. That's fine. And obviously we are not going to attack here. We're just trying to uh, manage our turns very carefully until we can get a big threat here, like the mascot exhibition down. Uh, worth noting, I mean, eventually we can just pay the extra three here. Uh, the problem is um, at the moment, we really can't do that. So, all right, don't love that, but it is what it is. Um, yep, so we just take the block here. Uh, that's fine. All right, there's another Hall of the Storm Giants. That's interesting. Um, so again, we're not quite there yet with that. So let's drop the Hall. Uh, we can bounce a couple of creatures, which is a temporary fix. Alternatively, what can we do? Not much. Um, we can do this and pay for the kicker, but then they can obviously just kind of get rid of it, <laughs> uh, which isn't ideal. Uh, so let's return two creatures. Let's return these two. Um, let's see. Very curious to see how this actually plays out. Kind of hope they go for the counter because again, we can just pay for it. Uh, I don't plan on not paying for it here. Nope, they're just going to take it. That is very smart by the opponent. Um, Do we attack? I think no, because they can just drop the Grazalax and then uh, get an attack in again to draw a card. This is a really like slow going game. Um, I'm hoping that in the next turn or two, we can kind of start to put some pressure on, but we just haven't been in a place where we can mascot exhibition or uh, draw a threat. I mean, we just haven't drawn anything. It's very unfortunate. Um, we knew this was going to come back down most likely, so that's not unexpected. I assume they just leave up the mana for this. Yeah. So here we actually can do this and pay for the three. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Um, that's cool. This really doesn't set us back at all because we weren't going to play anything else anyway. Um, we just say no attacks. It's all we can do. All right. Here's the hoping, guys. We do have a, a flyer to block, which is nice. What does this do? Okay, can't be blocked. So let's come down show player. Okay, so this just draws cards. This is an interesting deck here. It's just mono blue draw stuff, uh, which is like cool, I guess. Obviously just gonna block here. I don't want them to draw extra cards. Um, we need a big giant. 
That's what we need. We do have the hall, so we do we can start attacking in with just that uh, at some point here. But I've just been very cautious with that because they've obviously got a grip full of stuff. There's divide by zero. Um, so we could do that and leave up the divide by zero. Alternatively, we can just attack in with the hall. I like the hall idea. Let's get some pressure going. We still, I guess, get to leave up the divide by zero anyway, so. That seems better. Uh, yep. So we attack with this. Uh, this is gonna hit us regardless. Um, seven, ten, four. I'm just gonna attack with the hall. I don't think we go too crazy here. They can block it with just kind of a throwaway creature here, but that's going to get at least something off of the field. Um, the question is, do we want to divide by zero on the Desert Storm? I'm going to say yes. That just deals a lot of damage, and I'm not particularly interested in taking it. We do get a second mascot exhibition here as well. I think this is the right play, the correct line. I'm not positive. This is a, uh, a very, very tricksy game. Um... Interesting. It's good to know that they're willing to block the hall, though, because truthfully, they could have just taken seven and still been in like a reasonable position. They are going to start drawing cards here, though, which is not good for us. Um, we can't block this. This obviously has flying. There's just nothing we can do about that. So we might as well let it happen and hope for the best. I'm not sold. I'm not sold, guys. Don't think we're going to make it. What an interesting game this has turned out to be, though. So we are, I mean, this is a long game, too. Oh, good. Oh, that's interesting. Um, OK, uh, that might change the math a little bit here. Uh, OK, so let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten mana available. So what can we do? Um, they've got one unknown card. Uh, let's see. We can return basically everything to the hand if we would like. Uh, first things first, we should then attack. Because then we can play this and the Cultivator. I think I like that play. Alternatively, we could have attacked with the Hall, but I don't think that's the right play. Let's go ahead and do this. Well, let's just see what they do. I don't know. This is a tricky, tricky game, guys. This is a interesting one uh and this this deck is a very cool deck by the way the opponent's deck is interesting it's not one that i've seen uh truthfully um it's just a little bit of an odd one uh haven't seen it yet so kind of cool all right got him down to 10. let's do this um and truthfully we might just want to keep the 4-4 token um because we can just replay the cultivator so I'm going to do that. I assume, well, they've got some good options to keep, so I, I'm not going to make a claim as to what they might keep here. It could be quite a few different things, um, but regardless, I think we're in OK shape. OK, they're going to keep that. We do get to draw a card, which is nice. We'll go ahead and drop that down. Um, I guess we just mascot exhibition then in this case, because they have one unknown. Let's risk it. Let's risk it. We're, we're going for it. They may just have a counter here, uh, but it looks like they don't. OK. Oh, this is a interesting, interesting game. Um, OK, so we now have secured the position of lethal next turn, given that we've got Hall of the Storm Giants plus all of this stuff. So they do have to be very cautious of that. However, this is a very tricky deck. Uh, and so I'm very curious to see how this goes. What a fun one. Uh, Top Deck King, man, what a deck you have created today. This is fantastic. Uh, that's fine. We have no non-creature spells in our hand anymore. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to get Mascot, Ex Mascot Exhibition down is because this does tax it for us uh, beforehand. So I'd like to get that down while this isn't on the field. We knew we bounced this back to the hand, so let's be safe and hopefully not risk that. And now they have to develop their board more so than uh, than attack in and pressure us, which is very important. Um, <laughs> okay, 
Uh, let's do this. Um, again, they could have, they have the one unknown, but that's it. That is it. Um, all right, we're gonna attack in. Do we attack with everything? Yeah, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, this game has gone on for a very long time. I'm kind of at the point where I think we just need to attack with everything. Um, this does threaten lethal, obviously, so they have to do something. Uh, even without the Hall of the Storm Giants, this threatens lethal, so like they gotta make something happen here. I also, this can, I guess, activate, but I don't think that that's a great way to do it. Maybe it is, I don't know. Okay. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So they at least have to block the 3, 2. Uh, as well as a 4, 4. So at least a 4, 4 would have done it, but that's okay. This is gonna hopefully get some stuff off the field here, which is great. All right, that was sick. That was very, very good. Okay, so if we drop this, we can't do both. Let's go ahead and drop the Cultivator here. This is a more powerful card than the Innkeeper, and I think at this point we're looking for power over the long-term gain. Uh, the Innkeeper obviously does gain us some life and ramp us a little bit, but I'm not really interested in that at the moment. Uh, deck thinning is important. Um, also, really love the fact that this comes into play untapped. That is very crucial here. Alright, so they do have an opportunity here to potentially get some stuff down. They did get the mascot exhibition. They've got more than enough mana to do it. The trick is we still have two Hall of the, the Storm Giants. So those are some pretty big, pretty big threats that they're going to have to deal with here. What a game, guys. What a game. We're probably only going to be able to get two games in this time. Uh, just for the simple fact that we're at 20 minutes at this point and uh, it's still going. So... This has been a fantastic one. I'm very, very happy we got to test this out today. This is great. Um, all right. Opponent playing very methodically as well. You can tell they're really thinking through their plays, and I do appreciate that quite a bit. Um, here, I'm sure they attack in here just to draw an extra card. Yeah. Uh, definitely seems like the right play. Totally agree with that. Um, I think our play, because they are just tapped out at this point, uh, is definitely just to activate Hall. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh, not quite enough. All right. Uh, our play is very simply to attack in with everything. This on its own is a lethal... Well, I guess they do have the blocker. Um, but we're going to just be trading off here. Um, and eventually the Hall of the Storm Giants does outpower. So we're just taking threats off the field as best we can and they have to block here, which is very important. Getting rid of that Grazalax is very, very good for us. Um, okay, so here we can actually gain a little bit of life as well as get just two things down versus the, the initial one, uh, which is very important because if they do have a bounce spell, they're gonna need two, uh, which is, I think, more than they're gonna have. So we've just drawn so many of these cultivators well and i guess they've bounced a number of them back as well but man what a game what a game uh the hall of the storm giants man coming through so far at least hopefully we can still win it but uh we are definitely in the driver's seat i think at this point uh they've got two unknowns Being able to repeatedly bounce everything that they've been playing has been such a such a hindrance for them to have to deal with. I mean, you got to think they're trying to attack in, draw cards off of that attack. Doesn't really matter how much damage they're dealing because they're drawing more cards to just up that damage every turn. It plays very similar to like a Sixth Sense deck or a Curiosity deck, um, and that's really good. What we're able to do is, while we can't permanently deal with a lot of their stuff, what we're trying to do is bounce it enough that we're nullifying all that those draw effects um, and getting them to a point where they just don't have enough umph to really finish the game. Uh, and so far, it's been working okay. Now, this is a scary board, 100%, but... <laughs> uh, hmm. This is very good. Uh... We can't pay the ward cost is the problem. So I think the play, I think the play is again, just attack in with the hall. 
I don't I don't see a reason not to do this. Um one, two, three, four, five. Uh yeah, I think we just do it. Um now they can obviously eat a creature with this if they would like. Um but I'm kind of okay with it. We're just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring as best we can. That Hallbreaker Horror is going to be good. Oh, they do have a bounce spell. Okay, fair enough. That's very good for them. Uh, Unsummoned turned out to be a really good card. All right. Uh, yeah. This is very interesting. Uh, they can take the three. I didn't attack with the innkeeper for a number of reasons. One, it just dies to basically everything on the board here. Um, but uh, two, I didn't think it was super relevant to go ahead and throw out. But maybe that was incorrect. I don't know. I would love like an Allrons Epiphany right now. We could just finish this game up. All right, so they do get the Desert Doom in for an attack. Uh, ooh, voice crack there which is a very good attack, but crucially it's now tapped and that Hallbreaker Horror can now bounce it. If we drop that and the Cultivator, uh, which we have plenty of mana, so that's very doable. All right, they've got two creature or two things in hand. This is obviously uncounterable as well. I like this play. Um, I guess we could have attacked first, but we have to deal one damage to them. <laughs> uh, let's do this. So the question becomes, what do we bounce? I think it's just the, the Desert Doom. Let's get that out of there. Um, so now we've got a more permanent threat other than the hall that we don't have to repeatedly pay for, which is very good. Um, all right. Now we could have gotten rid of a blocker here, I know, but I think uh, that's okay. Let's do this. This still bounces it. Okay, introduction to Annihilation. Thankfully, that's a sorcery, um, so we really don't have to worry about it quite yet. Get that land, and I think we just have to attack with everything and hope that we can get one point of damage in. In this case, I think the innkeeper has to come in. Maybe we could have finished the game a, a, a turn early if we had been able to attack in. We did it, guys. After a 27 minute, well, maybe not quite 20, a 20 minute game. What in the world we finally got there? That was amazing. Okay, fantastic. Let's try and jump into a second game really quickly. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. This is probably going to be the only other game we get to, unfortunately. But uh, this is an interesting hand, but I think one we can at least try and keep here. We've got Glassful Mimic we can use on turn one as a land and then leave up that Test of Talents, uh, which I think might just be the play. Um, I would like to get Divide by Zero down. The only reason being we can get a green source with it. Uh, if we go get the Environmental Sciences, that then, of course, allows us to do that. So. Very interesting there if we can do it. Uh, that'll get us to Quandrix Cultivator and really help us out there. <clears throat> Ooh, now I really wish we had a green source. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and foretell this. I'm curious to see what we can hit with that test of talents, but I don't think in the early turns of the game it's something we need to stress about too much. We're not pressuring them at all. They're not forcing or they're not being forced to do anything in particular. Uh, and so I'm kind of curious to see what we can do here. I think we just pass with divide by zero up uh, Pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to do in the first few turns with this deck if you don't have the mana uh, Which unfortunately we do not uh, I'm gonna let this hit first and Then uh, potentially divide by zero here. Yeah, so the only reason I was waiting is on second main, if they had anything important to do there, I was going to let that be the card that we environmental scienced, uh, or excuse me, divided by zero, not environmental science. Uh, but that obviously wasn't the case. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll get a green source here, which is fantastic. We'll just go ahead and drop that down. Um, the question is, do we want to drop the test of talents or leave up the test of talents or throw out the prosperous innkeeper or just play glimpse the cosmos? Um, I'm going to go for the innkeeper, fully expecting that this is going to die. This is a black red deck. There's no way in the world this survives. But crucially, we do have an Allrons Epiphany that we're trying to get to here. And so this kind of helps us get there a lot quicker. 
there's that frostbite again fully expected that perfectly fine um but we got this we got this guys no worries uh this might be a bit of a long game as well uh okay yep uh cool so we do just kind of have to take a hit here that's kind of annoying but it's fine i'm gonna throw a glimpse back actually there's another innkeeper uh let's drop this down let's drop this down uh this is gonna give us a nice little blocker here let's take the action let's get another green source we do want probably an extra one of those um and here we actually could use the prosperous innkeeper but I think again we're just gonna leave up that test of talents if they happen to have a kill spell this is just an easy way that we can kind of get rid of it um and th that would be a much more powerful kill spell yes uh given they have to kill a cultivator so let's go ahead and test of talents this get rid of it and any other copies they may have um and it's library just the one exile that as well all right cool uh not a super efficient card but we do get a nice little peek at their hand here and their hand's not great uh actually uh they are going to be able to frostbite here of course but i kind of don't care it's not really the point we're just trying to get rid of everything we can at this point uh for that meat hook massacre to not be that devastating so that's cool uh man i wish we had an extra land here uh okay I think the play is just going to be to Alron's Epiphany. Let's get that down now. Um, oh, wow. Um, fascinating. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, let's throw this out. Um, yeah. And we'll get an attack in for two here. Not a very huge Alron's Epiphany turn, but we've got another one coming down. The assumption is they're going to Meat Hook Massacre, which we can just divide by zero um and that would be great so yeah no they're not going to fascinating okay uh no i think we just take it that's cool this hall break breacher breaker not breacher wow uh horror could be very very good for us here so i'm very curious to see how this goes okay cool yeah So they do get to throw this out for one, but we of course just do this and get to pull a mascot exhibition. Awesome. Uh, all right, we're definitely just gonna do this. Hopefully hit another land. Uh, I guess we could have just hit the environmental sciences to guarantee that land, but that kind of works out okay. Um, I think we just dropped the, the horror here. And we attack in again. So the horror is something that they can't just meat hook massacre away. Like they kind of have to draw a infernal grasp um, or some kind of big thing. Uh, I really like all these. I'm gonna just drop the mascot exhibition. That kind of sucks, but like it's kind of okay also. Um, cool. Yeah, let's drop another one. <laughs> uh, return target non-land permanent. Let's get the shambling gas out of there. I mean, <laughs> we're gonna gain a life here, which is great. I'm kind of surprised they didn't massacre last turn. I'm gonna attack with everything. The only thing they can really kill, I mean, I guess they can kill the innkeeper as well, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, that's cool. They could just eat the innkeeper. But now we've got two horrors out uh, and they're just trying to stall, I think, until they can meat hook massacre for enough. They're going to hit for one, which is not enough. Uh, it does gain them some life, but all right, guys, we did it. That is an undefeated run with Simic Giants. Let's talk about this. Okay, so sorry for only getting two games in, but obviously that first game lasted a long time and was a bit of a chess match, but we did get there. That was fantastic. Uh, undefeated. 
Total, uh, or excuse me, Top Tech King, uh, thank you so much again for sharing this. I really do appreciate it. Go go check him out, guys. Link in the description. I will uh, at him so that way you guys can go check him out. But uh, wow, guys, that was fantastic. Simic Giants for the win. Absolutely love this deck. It was really fun. Uh, a bit of a slow, kind of grindier deck for sure. Um, but, and a little light on threats, but it really, really pushed it. Uh, and it, it managed itself extraordinarily well, despite me probably misplaying a good bit there. But uh, regardless, fantastic and very, very fun. So again, Top Deck King, thank you so much. To everybody watching, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please subscribe and like if you did enjoy it. And I'll see you guys very soon for some more gameplay videos.